The biggest takeaway I think that we can make from last night's question time discussion, the question time uh, interrogation, is that Rishi Sunak is so far out of touch. He thinks he's living in the Whitehall, the Westminster bubble, where the issues of Tufton Street are the issues that face ordinary people, and they're not. And I think the most telling moment was the closing section of the interview when you could actually hear, you could actually hear people booing Keir Starmer. And there's a significant backlash, backlash um, when uh, he was discussing his stance on immigration and Europe, the European Convention of Human Rights, and he emphasized his commitment to uh, prioritizing the UK's security over adherence to the ECHR. And he um, said everything that the government is doing is compliant with international obligations. Well, that clearly is not true. The three laws put forward by Suella Braverman, the immigration, the illegal immigration law, the borders and uh, the borders and control, national control law, and the Rwanda law, all three defy international um, legislation and our international obligations, particularly under the 1951 uh, Refugee Convention, which maybe is in need of redefinement, but it's not something we should be doing unilaterally. And the outsourcing which is taking place or which is being discussed at the moment, for example, uh, between Italy and Albania, is a different type of outsourcing that is compliant, specifically, it says it's compliant with the ECHR, is compliant with our international obligations, which Rwanda is not. And more than that, we are demonizing another country, we are demonizing Rwanda in order to, uh, in order to have our own way and in order to feel that we are secure. This is empire by another name, this is condescending, this is patronizing, this is unfair. And Sunak has said that the UK security takes precedence over directives of the ECHR, uh, and, uh, and he says as a, that he's got, he's willing to bypass or reinterpret the international human rights obligations that are enshrined in that institution, in that court. And he reiterated his controversial policy, which has not yielded a result. Not a single person has been put on a flight to Rwanda, and the people who have been put in Rwanda uh, by us, people who have been directed over to Rwanda from Diego Garcia have uh, said that, the, that living in Rwanda is like living in an open prison and they have been subjected to all manner of abuse while they've been there. This is not the way to offshore our obligation. We are responsible for those people and, we have and, and the one person who went willingly has absconded or disappeared. Um, you know, this is not about security. This is about shirking our duty. Uh, as for the, the, the debate itself, Sunak had a tough time, uh, especially when, uh, when questions about the NHS uh, and about Partygate. He was booed by the audience when he attributed NHS waiting lists to industrial action. And when he talked about the ECHR, you could hear the audience uh, at the end of the program shouting, shame, shame. So he hasn't got the audience. If the audience represents the nation, he hasn't got the nation behind him. He also struggled to defend his record on immigration. He faced criticism for his D-Day commemoration, uh, for, for leaving the D-Day commemoration early to record a TV interview to record a TV interview. His apologies for past actions, including Partygate, was met with scepticism. Why? Because he's tried to present an image of himself which is not authentic, and he thinks that by trying to look tough, he's going to curry favor. You curry favor in public life by um, showing yourself, by looking vulnerable. John Swinney, as a senior figure in the uh, Scottish National Party, Swinney focused on Scotland's interests, particularly criticising um, the Westminster government's policies that affect Scotland. Uh, he stressed Scotland's commitment to social justice, to independence, 
uh, arguing that Scotland's needs are best met outside the UK, uh, the current framework. Scotland, he says, welcomes refugees. Well, then he should be, then Scotland should be taking more refugees. But that doesn't seem to be the case. It's all rhetoric and not reality. His performance, however, resonated well with the Scottish audience, emphasising local governance and independence as solutions to Scotland's issues. Ed Davey, for the Liberal Democrats, highlighted the need for a more inclusive and fair government. He criticised both the major parties. He tried to nick Clegg. Um, but he didn't. He doesn't really succeed because, again, he lacks the personality. It's OK clowning around on water, but on land, he... He, he, he's carrying the burden, like Pilgrim, of the post office scandal, which he doesn't, which he doesn't address. And so as a result, he comes across as a fake. And, well, yes, he's the only fake available um, for people uh, who, who, who are not going to vote for the Labour Party, but who never, nevertheless don't want to endorse Rishi Sunak's nonsense. So, uh, you know, Keir Starmer, Keir Starmer, seen as the stronger performer, effectively addressing concerns about Labour's tax plans and public service record, but he was momentarily stumped when an audience member called him a political robot. He recovered by emphasising his public service background. Um, he is Robocop. Ah, he makes, a, he makes a virtue of his woodenness or his metallica. Um, and he tried to convey a sense of com commitment to change without being overly, uh, overtly partisan. But the same YouGov poll that showed 64% of respondents believing that Starmer had won the debate uh, was, uh, is, 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 is also, you know, it's not, it reflects the move toward, uh, of the country towards Labour because it's in opposition to the Conservatives. But there wasn't that flood of support that you would expect with 64%. That is higher than most governments have got. 64% is a phenomenal achievement. But you wouldn't have known that by listening to Starmer last night. Um, he may have emerged as the most compelling candidate in the debate, but his competition was Lilliputian and dire, 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 dire.